Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Everything Kratom, the podcast about anything and everything Kratom. Great to have you with us on this Wednesday morning, hoping all is well with you out there today as always. Today I wanted to talk about how there's seemingly, in my opinion, this need to differentiate Kratom from the other category. And so, what do I mean by that? In my opinion, there's like, there are a few different types of substances. Okay, there's like the ones that are prescribed, yes. There are the ones that are not prescribed, yes. So that that's like more of a general way of looking at it. If you zoom in a bit, there's a few more ways of viewing things. There are the substances that people are generally familiar with, legally and illegally, and those that they're not. Like, everyone's heard of uh, Ozempic because there are commercials about it all the time, even if people don't know what it is or what it's for. But, um, but then there are other substances people aren't familiar with because they don't hear about them. So I keep making these categories in my head, and I keep digging down further, and then I finally come to this area of, like, is it illegal, legal, or is it somewhere in between? And that is kind of the spot that I want to start at. The in-between. We have things that are in-between. Um, I mean, like everything, like even like, you know, I'm seeing CBD all over the place right now. Like hemp, um, CBD shops and everything like that. Like that's relatively recent. Uh, I didn't see any CBD stores up until very recently popping up everywhere. You know, they're popping up everywhere now. And um, and that's because of the clarification in legal stuff. But it's not like cannabis THC is legal on the federal level. But people are generally familiar with the, the classic THC, you know, everyone thinks of the 1960s marijuana, 70s marijuana kind of like thing. People are familiar with that. So they kind of have a schema. They have an idea of what they think about it. And the CBD thing, I think people are still figuring out, but generally they're becoming familiar with. I've talked to a lot of people who are um, not really like the sort of person that knows much about that sort of stuff, nor have they ever tried marijuana or anything like that, which is seemingly becoming less and less people. (laughs) But I do know some people like that. And they're even starting to create an understanding around like CBD. So it's this exposure to it and the constant talking about it around, you know, out there that that makes something familiar and more well known, regardless of how people think about it. And that kind of brings me to Kratom. So when it comes to Kratom, it's this in between. It's not something everyone's talking about. It's not a very visible in your face kind of thing in the news and it's not quite that easy to understand and it's not necessarily unique in any one given point there but to have all three of those things or all four I don't even remember how many I just mentioned I think three (laughs) to have all those factors together certainly creates a unique situation I think so you don't have much talk around it. So people don't know what it is unless they know what it is. And they haven't necessarily heard of it like they've heard of insert medication here that has a lot of commercials. And when one does try to understand it, it's not necessarily straightforward. You know, as is a lot of things. Like there's, a, am sure, a lot of substances that people think are straightforward aren't i mean like their bodies are complicated chemistry is complicated so just because someone smacks an easy name onto something doesn't mean it's easy to understand so when it comes to kratom i don't think it's even unique in that regard however people do have an opinion of morphine heroin fentanyl and they've heard of those things so anything somewhat similar or reminiscent of or just talked about in that general way 
when you're first learning about it, it's going to kind of ring a bell and you're, you're going to kind of start thinking about it in the context of those things you know about. And so I'm trying to think of other examples like this, like spice, right? K2, like these things that I, I didn't know anything about. Like when, when I first started like seeing the, the word spice or like K2 or synthetic marijuana pop up everywhere. Like I had no idea what, what the heck to think about it. Um, it seemed weird to me and I had no idea what it was. I didn't have an opinion on it other than, well, I just don't want to do that. But it wasn't like I had an immediate reaction to learning about it that was like positive or negative. I just was like, I have no idea. That is just beyond me. I I don't know. It's like cannabis, but it's not real. I don't, I don't get it. And um, then that was about it. So I had to like be exposed to it a, a number of times in different situations and contexts to develop an understanding of it that was different than <laughs> or like not directly related to cannabis because it's not. It is different. So that took some exposure and it took some thinking and it took different situations where I was being exposed to what that is. So I think Kratom is no different. I think it's like there are many similarities we can draw between Kratom and both actually both stimulants and, you know, sedatives. But at the end of the day, it's it's Kratom. And so it's like to be exposed to it in different situations and learning about it in different contexts seems to be what's needed if if we want to develop a better understanding of what Kratom is as you know I guess I'm talking about a society as a whole but um, on the individual level too that's certainly what it's been taking for me to understand it better and I think that it's you know that I'm all the better for it so all this in saying I think multiple exposures to the idea of Kratom to talking about Kratom and to learning about Anything that has to do with it, whether it's a news story or a research paper, um, it's all good. Like, it's it's all important. And it's just important to get the different contexts rather than just, you know, in, in one situation or with one narrative. And then at the end of the day, it's up to you to decide what, what you think. And whatever you think, you're right. <laughs> because it's what you think. All right, everyone. That's it for today kind of a silly string of thoughts, but it's my string of thoughts and I like it. (laughs) Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow. Take it easy. Talk to you then. Bye-bye.